Hello, my name is Adam and I'm pre-sales consultant at Stormit. Stormit as an AWS Select Consulting Partner can help you make the most of what AWS Cloud has to offer. Today we will take a look at Amazon Cloud Farm pricing, which is as usual based on pay-as-you-go model, but for AWS customers the pricing could be difficult to understand. So I will try to explain how it works and go through some tips on how to save money. At first we will take a look on Cloud Farm pricing options and some general information about its pricing. Then we will go through what determines the total cost of Cloud Front and then on some cost optimization tips on how to reduce the cost and how we at Stormit can help you optimize this cost even further. CloudFront has three basic pricing options from AWS. First is free tier. If you are unsure if CloudFront is right for you, you can always start with the free tier eligible account. As the name suggests, you get to use Amazon CloudFront for free with the AWS free usage tier. Once you sign up as an AWS customer, you will receive one terabyte of data transfer out and 10 million HTTP or HTTPS requests each month. Even if your usage is higher, you will only be billed for the usage above this allowance. The second one is on demand. Your costs are determined by pay as you go pricing and the actual usage of CloudFront services. You basically pay just for what you use. The third one is AWS discounted pricing. You can get discounts on data transfer out of AWS Cloud if you reserve capacity and commit to using more than 10 terabytes per month. And we at Stormit offer a special pricing. Our offer has no hidden costs or commitments for usage levels. We offer special rates for businesses transferring as little as one terabyte of data per month and save businesses up to 60% on CDN data transfer out costs. So let's look on what determines the cloud phone cost. I already have some things revealed here. First is if some AWS service will send something to CloudFront Edge, like for instance some files or request responses from EC2 instances, S3 buckets or ALBs, it is free of charge. So anything go what goes from AWS services to CloudFront distribution, it's free of charge. And the second one here, if you are using any other service than AWS, you can be charged separately depending on this service. But uh, this will not show up on the AWS bill. And now let's look on what you will see on your AWS bill. The major part of CloudFront cost will always be data transfer out to your users. For example, if you send one gigabyte to your user, you have to pay based on the location of the CloudFront pop in EU or North America. This will be a little over 8 cents. And in Africa, it will be 11 cents per gigabyte. You can choose which edge locations or pops you want to use. We will get to this later in this video. Then you will also usually see some costs for HTTP or HTTPS requests. These are fractions of a dollar per 10,000 requests, so it can be a major part. It depends on your service. And the last one here is the put and post requests from CloudFront distribution to AWS services or any other service or on-premises will cost you something per every gigabyte. So basically if user upload something to your service, you will have to pay for every gigabyte of these files. And here we have a table of some other functions of CloudFront that are paid. The first thing here is an invalidation request. You are charged for the manual deletion of data from CloudFront edge locations, pops, cages. The second thing is real-time logs. These are special types of logs that are in real time and you don't have to use them. Then there is a special function named origin shield. 
which I have already described in one of our videos. If you want to, you can watch this video and learn more about it. But again, this is a special function and it depends on your use case if you need to use it or not. And the last two things here are advanced for features that are also paid, but doesn't tend to be used that much. How can Stormit help you optimize your CloudFront costs? We help companies to save no hidden costs or contracts. At Stormit, we have helped many customers to optimize their overall spend on data transfer from different industries with a broad range of use cases from web applications and blogs, media streaming and gaming. Here is an example of customer from the online gaming industry that needs to deliver a mix of dynamic and static content to players. By leveraging Amazon CloudFront and implementing the best practices, we managed to achieve significant cost savings for total data transfer out from AWS. Before they worked with Stormit, the customer spending on DTO was slightly above $3,000 per month. But after Stormit's optimization, their spending dropped significantly to approximately $1,700 which translates to a more than 40% decrease and year savings of $18,000. You can find a link in the description with a calculator that will show you an estimate of what you can save with Stormit. And let's have a look on how to reduce Amazon CloudFront costs in general. Using the right price class can play a major role in optimizing CloudFront costs. Even if you are distributing your content all over the world, you don't actually need to use every available pop, point of presence or edge location. Data transfer out is a significant factor in the overall CloudFront cost and this is one way to save some money on it. AWS charges less where their costs are also lower. Price classes provide the option to lower the prices you pay to deliver your content out of AWS. The table here displays which edge locations are used when you choose a specific Amazon CloudFront price class and also the price for gigabyte without any discounts in this region. As you can see, there is a big difference between the price of, for example, US and Europe pop versus Africa and South America pops. You can limit CloudFront to only use North America and Europe, then you will know that the maximum on-demand price that you will have to pay is around 8 cents per gigabyte. But it can mean that users from regions like Africa and India will experience higher latency, so be aware of this. There is also another way how to reduce Amazon CloudFront cost. You can reserve capacity for CloudFront. This CloudFront price reduction is usually only suitable for those businesses that have a steady application or website traffic and therefore predictable usage in the long term. Businesses that have seasonality or peaks throughout the year should expect to always pay at least the equivalent of their minimum monthly commitment. You can also save money with some cage control settings. Normally CloudFront serves a file from an edge location until the cache duration that you specified passes. It's best to make sure your expiration time isn't too short. It should be days or weeks at least and months ideally. You should be aware that if you need to make frequent changes to these files, this function will not work for you very well. But you can invalidate your files in CloudFront cages anytime you need. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos about AWS services, subscribe to our channel or if you want to learn more about other services, visit our website and blog. Links are in the description below. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us.